welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and today we're going to take a look at loose complete vehicles, play sets, action figures, last 17, and a few baggies. And you got to be careful out there because there's a lot of repro running around. I have no proof that some of these items I'm going to show you are repro. Some of them I do. And you just got to be careful when you're out there buying, especially as it relates to the very desirable very expensive, highly sought after items. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we're gonna take a look at a Blue Snags. This is obviously a legit example. Take note of Snaggletooth's face, all right? It's kind of a peach, brownish peach color. It's a little darker than, uh, you, you know, than some of the other examples I'm, I'm gonna show you. And this is something that was brought up on Instagram. So. This is a legit example from what I can tell. It sold for $315, obviously a lot of wear to it, okay? So that's kind of like the low end of a decent 70-ish grade vintage blue snaggletooth complete. No torso discoloration, but obviously the boots are in rough shape, some scratches here and there. So that's one. All right, then you compare it to this one, all right? This one, to me, looks repro. It just looks too perfect the boot color, everything. There's a lot of kind of bubbling on the silver paint on the back by the, uh, you know, by the uh, date stamp. So, you know, to me, it definitely concerns me. If you look at his face there, it's a brighter white. And it, again, it could be the flash from the camera. I'm not saying it's definitely repro, but it's a really good repro if that's what it is. And if it's legit, awesome. It's a, it's a great buy. That that one is is the least kind of concerning, okay? Let's assume that this one has not been repainted, that, that this is actually a legit example. $510 is probably about right, if not on the slightly low end, given the condition of those boots. So you got that one. Then you had this seller who had several sales where he said, this is repro. He had several sales. And then he had several sales where he didn't say it's repro. This one looks repro to me. I mean, I'm sorry that the face does not look right. It, it's, 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 it has kind of a weird wonky look to the face. And, you know, if you look at the paint, it looks like it's been repainted around the chest area. So again, I have no proof that it's, that it's repro because I don't know repro very well, but the head looks off to me. It just does not look right. And it sold for $410. And again, this seller had others that were like $50 that were repro. So is it a stand solo or whatever? I don't know, but you know, it, it just, there's something kind of off about it. And I would just be very cautious as you're out there buying some of these things. And again, I'm not accusing the seller of anything, but it, it just doesn't look right. And maybe it's just so perfect and so factory fresh that I, I've kind of forgotten what they look like, but it, it looks off when you compare that one to this one. Uh, the head on it just does not look the same to me. It, it just, there's something quite off about it. Uh, on to some legitimate items. Here was that Red Bar R5 D4 with the hole in this sticker that I had in my What to Buy video. And I said, don't go crazy. I think it should sell at, you know, 300 to 350 max. And it sold for 355. So I was pretty much in line with estimates there. Red Bar R5s have just gotten so expensive. And it's, it's insane to see the jump in those despite what you could probably consider a slight slowdown in some of the prices for vintage Star Wars figures. But re legit Red Bar R5s, even in kind of rough condition like this, are still commanding big money on the secondary market. Budget-friendly example. 355 in an auction. Some baggies I wanted to go through. We had the mail-away baggie for Forlom. This one, this seller had a number of really nice baggies we're going to go through. This one sold for $135.25. Uh, we also had a Made in Taiwan baggie for the Biker Scout. This is a, a heat seal baggie, I believe. And that one sold for $177.50. Tough to find the Biker Scout in a baggie, and especially one that has not yellowed at all. I mean, look how clean that figure is. Very, very white on that one. So if you're into baggies, there was also a Made in Hong Kong baggie for the Biker Scout from a different seller that had a number of really nice examples. You can see here his auctions were 
across the gamut for a lot of these baggies, and some of them we're going to cover right now. But this one sold for $181, and again, the Taiwan baggie sold for $177.50, so a tight price range on that one. That's one I wouldn't mind grabbing at some point. Uh, here was an orange snake made in Hong Kong Yoda baggie. This is another one that is tough to find legit. I got a brown snake Yoda baggie, but this, this orange snake was tempting, but one of my friends was going after it, so I said, okay, I'll stay away from it. It did have a little bit of rubbing to the print on the baggie, but that one still sold for $282. So very tough to find, but when you find a seller with a legit tape sealed orange snake Yoda baggie, it you know this seller had a number of examples as you can see in that photo again. So I felt pretty good that it was legit, and uh, one of my friends did go after it. He didn't end up winning it unfortunately, but uh, two eighty two on that one. I think for my brown snake Yoda, which was a heat sealed baggie, I picked that up on Deal or No Deal, and I paid a lot more. I think I paid. 375 for mine and it did come back with an 85 from collector archive services but hopefully one of these days i can grab the orange snake yoda another common one is the china baggie for zuckus that one sold for 75 bucks which you know that's about right they're not very expensive and they're very plentiful uh, very easy to find that particular baggie for zuckus uh, another one that i do have in my collection is the esb i think this is a d baggie for luke hoff and one thing you got to look out for is discoloration to the limbs. This one had that on his legs as, as well as one arm. $95 on that one. And then here was another example where it did not have any discoloration to the arms. Exact same baggie. That one sold for $151.25. And my example does have very slight discoloration to the figure. But uh, that just shows you how much... Uh, more you got to pay for a clean example of Luke Hoth in the in the ESBD baggie. This is the baggie that appeared in the Hoth Rebel Command Center playset, along with a baggie for General Veers. Uh, this is a tough one. This is actually one I bid on. I happened to be sitting on the crapper, and I was I wasn't really using it. I was just sitting there because I just needed a moment of clarity. I was I was exhausted. And this one was ending with like two minutes left. So I did put it in a last second bid, but I did not win it. This is a tape sealed baggie for IG-88. Very tough baggie to find, but as you can see there, it was still tape sealed. Although the tape was starting to peel a little bit, but it was still, still, you know, you can see it's still sealed there. Uh, so I was tempted on it. I was like, man, I should at least throw in a low ball bid. And I finished second. I think I bid 130. The final bid was 132, which actually was, was a pretty low bid. I was kind of you know, half-heartedly bidding on it. And I probably should have bid higher because it's a tough baggie to track down, IG-88. Uh, anytime you can find a legit example, grab it. Uh, I'd say 175 is really the market value, and I probably should have bid that. Uh, next up is the Barada baggie. This is another tape seal baggie, and this one was very clean. You can see how clean the tape seal on this one was. These only were available, to my knowledge, in the Jabba the Hutt dungeon playset, along with... EV-99, and one other last 17 figure. I, it escapes my brain right now, but uh, th th that is a very desirable baggie for you know a last 17 figure. That one sold for $199 on two bids. And then the last baggie before we dig into some last 17 and playset vehicle type stuff uh, is a sensor scope. This was a good deal at $123.50. This was also a tape seal baggie. I tend to shy away from tape seal baggies because you never know if they've been retaped and things like that. But occasionally you'll see one where you can see that it looks legit. This one looks legit. It's got some residue around this, the tape and it doesn't look double taped or anything like that. And the figure itself was in immaculate condition. The writing on the baggie was immaculate. So one twenty three fifty was a good deal. I mean, that's about what you would pay for a near mint plus condition R two D two sensor scope just by itself, not in a baggie. So I thought that was a really good deal. Some last seventeen figures from this particular seller. We had a General Lando that one sold for one ninety fifty, which again was probably about right. You know, it wasn't perfect. It had some light scuffs around the crotch area and on the leg. So it was advertised as mint. I would say it's near mint minus at best. So one ninety fifty on that one. And then we had the Imperial Gunner, which was in, actually in pretty clean shape. The belt buckle was good, and the insignias looked pretty good, and it had the correct blaster. So that one did sell for a lot of money at four hundred three eighty nine. Uh, you had a no nose rub that I can tell. Uh, Imperial Dignitary for one sixty nine twenty five. Uh, very, very clean example. I think that one would grade an 85 all day long. And uh, that's one I wouldn't mind pecking up at some point later this year. Han Solo and Carbonite. 
this was a very clean example. Be sure to look for discoloration or yellowing to the, the chest area. This one didn't have that, although it did have some light scuffs to it. That one sold for $226.49. EV99 sold for $390. And it looked to be a pretty clean example overall. Nice close-ups of the figure. It's hard, it's hard for me to gauge what this one would get in a grade. You could maybe argue that there's some scuffing to the chest area, but I just don't know that figure well enough to give a good idea of what it's going to grade, grade at. But uh, that one did sell for $390. And then we had Luke Skywalker in his indoor combat poncho, complete with the correct Black pl Palace Blaster. That one sold for $224.50. So uh, some good last 17 prices there. And then a Monomon uh, from the same seller. This one was not perfect. It did have some scuffing around the chest area. And that sold for $235. And then there was another one that sold that looked a little cleaner. You can see how much cleaner the chest and the yellow paint apps were on it. It did have one dot on one arm there. But I think that's a much cleaner example. And as a result, it did sell for more $290 in a best, you know, in a make an offer or, you know, buy it now situation versus 235 in the auction for one that was not nearly as clean. So that gives you a, a good price range as well. On to some vehicles. We have the Millennium Falcon. It was 100% with working electronics and the box. The box was kind of tatty. That one sold for $315. There's a good look at it. It also did include the Jedi training ball, which is a little tougher to find. Uh, we also had a die cast Imperial TIE bomber. I, I have to admit it, I would have been really tempted to bid on this one if I had seen it, but I did not see it. It was very clean, just a couple of scratches, probably overall an 80 or a 75 plus, but that's really the kind of the last big die cast that I need. So if I see another one that pops up that's in pretty similar condition, I might be tempted around this price point, 783 uh, which is 620 pounds. This was over in the UK. That's on the upper end about of where I'd be willing to spend. I'd ideally like to get it for about 650, but I would have been very tempted on this one because it was a very clean example. Nice white paint. It did obviously have yellowing to the wings as well as that fuselage piece, but that's pretty common and they, they pretty much all have that nowadays unless they've been bleached. So I, I thought that was a pretty fair deal. Next up is the Imperial Secure or just they call the security scout, not the imperial. I'm getting it mixed up with the imperial sniper. This is the security scout, which is a rebel item. And uh, in the box art, it has Luke indoor combat poncho riding one of these. So this is a rebel vehicle, but this is a mini rig from the Power of the Force line. And that one did sell in an auction for 175 which is actually a pretty good deal. This is a very fragile item. And usually either the fins are broken or that seat belt is broken. But that was a nice clean example for 175 Very mint example. Uh, now, going back to Repro. This one is a sand crawler. Now it says complete with Repro remote. There's a Repro remote nowadays. I did not know that. So... You know, you got to be careful what you're buying, okay? It was an original sand crawler, but uh, apparently the remote is a repro, and it sold for $700. And then when you compare it to this one, which was 100% complete and non-repro, that one sold for $620. So this, this buyer actually got one with the box, as well as a non-repro remote control for $620 on four bids, versus this one which did not have the box and it had a repro remote and somebody paid more for it. So just be careful. Don't spend $700 on something that has repro accessories. It's a personal opinion. No offense if you like repro or if you're okay with repro. I'm not judging you. I'm not telling you how to spend your money. I'm just trying to get you to use your money in as wise a manner as possible uh, in a somewhat down market. Okay. So that, that to me was the better deal. Next up, we had the Death Star Space Station. This was 100% complete with the Dianoga Trash Monster as well as the foam. Again, I don't know if that foam is still legit or if that foam is repro, but uh, you know, I didn't look at it too closely. $260 on that I, I thought was a really good deal given that it came with the box. And then finally, we had the Rebel Transport. It included the face masks as well as the backpacks and then General May Dean's just hanging out saying, I am the ruler of this rebel transport and my staff says so. Uh, but that one did include the box and the box was in pretty good shape overall as well as the instruction sheet. That one did sell in an auction for $195.50 plus $22 shipping. So pretty good deal on that one as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Baggies Last 17 
Uh, we had some uh, vehicles and things like that, but uh, just be careful of that repro stuff out there. I still question some of these snaggle teeth sisses as to whether they're legit or not. And, uh, you know, I, I would just tread cautiously on eBay. There's a lot of scum and villainy, villainy out there. And again, who knows if this is legit? I, I find it hard to tell, but it, there's just something off about those heads relative to the to the legit examples. It just doesn't have the same shape as this legit example. And I would probably keep moving along, trying to find a, a, a better example from a trusted seller. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this look. Thank you again, as always, for watching, and I'll be back soon.